This is the new Garmin Lily 2, which adds a boatload of new data metrics, new sport profiles, a new metal case, new band design, and much more. Both myself and my wife have been testing it over the last little while, putting it through its paces, digging into what works well and what falls a bit short. With that, let's just get straight into it. First up is the price. The price for the Lily 2 is $249 US dollars for the base edition, $279 for the edition with nylon straps, and $299 for the edition with the leather straps like you see right here. Now these top two editions with either the nylon or the leather straps are called the classic editions, uh, and they only include the one single strap. They don't include a secondary sport strap, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the good news though is they've switched to a standard 14 millimeter strap. In the past, they used a proprietary one, and that was super annoying. Now you can see standard 14 millimeter pins there, so you can basically go buy a cheap strap or sports strap, whatever you want, any nice strap for that matter, on Amazon or something else, and then just swap it in here yourself. Also of note is they switched to a metal case here on the outside, uh, as opposed to the plastic that it was previously. The case design is still the same 35 millimeter case, uh, and the strap remains, as I mentioned, the 14 millimeter size. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna walk you through the watch itself, step by step, including all the new features as well as the existing features so you can figure out if there's something for you. Now starting off on the watch face, you'll notice it's gonna go off in just a second. I know this is the touchscreen watch, and you'll see there we go, the watch face is off, but notably, you still have this pattern on the back there. So this is not an always-on watch, at least in terms of the display, but the actual pattern is part of the design of the watch. So that's always there, and then once I simply tap the display, then it shows back up again. In addition to tapping the display, you can also just simply raise your wrist and it'll turn on immediately. In fact, that's actually one of the biggest improvements I've seen from the Lily 1 to the Lily 2, is the fact that that gesture there is finally immediate. On the Lily 1, it just took a long time, and that's using the default settings. You can actually change those settings even more if you want to, to increase the reaction time or even decrease it if you needed to. Now, as I mentioned, it's a touchscreen display where you can swipe left and right like this, but there's also this little like fake button at the bottom there it's not actually a real button, it's just an area where you tap, and that's basically how you get back from the menus. Uh, there is no other buttons on this at all. Now, there are a couple different watch face options, but they're all kind of in the same ballpark. Uh, you can go ahead and tap in the upper left-hand corner here to change through the different data complications on this particular watch face, like you see right there, uh, iterating through some of those. However, the majority of the data that you're going to see is by swiping to the right or left through the widgets. You can see the My Day widgets right here with the steps, intensity minutes, and sleep. And you can see here the health stats, that's my heart rate, my stress level, as well as my body battery. Swiping again, here is the weather for the day. And you can see the weather here for the next few days. If I tap back out, you can use this button right there to kind of escape out, if you will. I swipe again, here's the steps for the day, tap into that. Now you can see steps for the last seven days. Again, escaping out of this. And you just simply swipe through all the widgets. There's heart rate, for example, body battery, uh, you can change all these widgets if you want to, including the female health tracking widgets that you see right here. This is my wife's watch, so that's why it's got that data on there. And log symptoms and moods right directly from the watch itself into the Garmin Connect app. Swipe, there's hydration logging. And again, all these are customizable. You can add or remove them. And notably, one of the new features here is the sleep tracking on the watch itself, or at least the ability to see the sleep data on the watch. Uh, you would always have sleep tracking, but you couldn't see the data on the watch. Now you can. And you also have noticed there, if I swipe, uh, there's also kind of suggestions about uh, basically your sleep from last night, so late bedtime in this case. And then you'll see if I go back here, it's got the sleep score, 81 at the bottom. That is new to Lily. It didn't previously have that on either the watch or on the Garmin Connect side. Uh, so you'll now see that here as well. From a sleep accuracy standpoint, overall it did pretty good. We had one night on Saturday night where it said she went to bed at 10 o'clock and she went to bed at 4 a.m. because movie marathons happen sometimes. Uh, and it did at least get the time she woke up correctly at around 10 o'clock, uh, but it basically assumed she went to sleep for the entire night, which wasn't the case at all. And then of course, you'll also get smartphone notifications as well displayed on here that you can view as well as clear. Now, all this data is concurrently synced to Garmin Connect using your smartphone uh, and also visible on the website using your desktop browser if you want to. This includes things like steps and heart rate and uh, pulse ox, or basically blood oxygenation levels, as well as respiration rate and all the normal normal activity tracker stuff that you'd expect to see, as well as including the female health tracking portions that I mentioned earlier on, both on the watch here as well as on the app. Uh, in fact, that's something my wife's been using for, I don't know, at least a year or so now, maybe two years, uh, where basically she logs all the data in and then it predicts her period, and it's generally within a day or so despite having a regular cycle. So it's pretty accurate overall. 
Note that this does not have any sort of wrist temperature sensing on the back of it. Uh, so this is the optical heart rate sensor that you see right there. It's Garmin's Gen 4 optical heart rate sensor versus the newer Gen 5 edition came out about, uh, I don't know, 10 months or so ago, but it's not on this particular device. And that newer Gen 5 one includes both wrist temperature sensing as well as ECG, neither of which are here. That's something I would have liked to have seen given that Fitbit puts it in their $150 products and this is 300 bucks seems a bit of a gap there. Now, one thing that's worthwhile noting is if you are finding this video interesting or useful in some way, shape or form, just simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really does help with the video and the channel quite a bit. Now, the last new option to mention before we get into some of the sports tracking is that if I were to go ahead and just back out here and then swipe down from the top, this is the controls menu. And then from there, I can actually access Garmin Pay, which is this left-hand credit card option over there. Sorry, it's a bit tough to do this like this. I then want to put in my passcode, it's secret, and then it'll go ahead and show my credit card there. From there, I can tap onto any sort of NFC reader and pay for something directly with my watch. Uh, now keep in mind, this does depend on your bank and availability um, of your bank in that particular region. In the US, it's got the majority of banks you're likely to use with a credit card. Outside the US, it's definitely hit or miss. There's a lot of them here in the Netherlands, but uh, not our particular Dutch bank that we use. So almost every other bank is actually covered. Also from this controls menu, you can access your notifications. You can access the sleep mode. The sleep mode is nice because at night ensures the display does not automatically turn on if you raise your wrist or it thinks you raise your wrist as you're just moving around in bed. Instead, you actually have to tap the little button in the bottom there to turn on the watch to be able to see the time. Funnily, from a battery life standpoint, Garmin says about five days of battery life between charges. Uh, you'll charge it using a USB-C cable on the back with their kind of proprietary charging clip right there. It just simply snaps on. That battery life seems about right for us. We've been putting lots of workouts on this, both myself and my wife kind of trading it back and forth. In addition to that, I changed the default setting up for the timeout so the display didn't shut off so quickly from short to medium. So that's gonna burn a little bit more battery as well. But I kind of like that trade off. Now with all that covered, let's dive into the sport mode side of things. To access the sport mode, you're gonna tap this little button at the bottom there and you'll see the activities list. And then from there, you can choose different sport modes that you want. Uh, so there's dance, fitness, strength, running, etc. In fact, here's all the sport modes on both sides of the screen right there. You go ahead and configure the sport modes from the Garmin Connect app, and then you basically configure additional options from there. Within each of the sport modes, you can change, for example, your data pages, your data fields, as well as uh, some of the alerts and kind of automated timers on there. In the case of run, for example, you can have two custom pages, plus things like the heart rate gauge page, as well as the music controls page and the time as well. In addition, there's also the ability to set the alerts, as I mentioned, you can see some of those options here as well. Once you're ready to go ahead and get going, you'll tap this run option, and then it's gonna go and try to connect your phone, at least if it's an outdoor run anyways, uh, to use your phone's GPS. The Lily 2 does not have GPS internal, instead it leverages your phone for that GPS signal. One of the improvements I've seen between the Lily 2 and the Lily 1 is that in the Lily 1, that whole like phone handoff thing just never worked at all for me. Like it just, majority of the time it failed. Um, versus here, it's succeeded every single time. Now, right now, my wife has her phone with her and she's not in the building, thus it's not going to find it. But you can see this video I shot earlier when the phone and the watch were together and then it connected it virtually immediately. Now, you don't have to bring your phone with you. If you don't care about your GPS map or you don't care about your distance while cycling or more accurate distance while running, then you can just get going from there. Now, at the top, there is also the settings option there to add alerts as well as turn on and off auto lap. Uh, now, going back here once, you just simply tap start and then you're going to see your data pages and the data that you configured. So at the top here, I've got distance, I've got the timer. And if I swipe to the right here, I can go ahead and see my heart rate up there, the timer again, my heart rate zone. Swiping again, you're gonna go ahead and see the heart rate on this whole screen, a gauge to go around because it's pretty low heart rate right now. It's not in any particular zone. And then swiping one more time, I've got music controls. If the phone was there, it allows me to control music on my phone. There's no music storage on the Lily itself. And then one more time, I get into the time screen, allowing me to see the time and day uh, from there. Swipe again, and I'm back to the main screen. To stop workout, you'll just simply hold this bottom button for a couple seconds, and then it stops. What's notable here is that stopping action, what's notable here is that stopping action constantly happened to me on the Lily One, where it basically automatically stopped my watch or paused my watch mid-run. I never had that happen on any of my runs here, nor did my wife on any of her runs. So whatever they changed, fix that, which is another nice little upgrade from the Lily One. Now, from a visibility standpoint, I had no issues at all seeing this display, either in sunny conditions or at nighttime in workouts or non-workout type scenarios. Like, 
Visibility across the board on both the Lily 1 as well as the Lily 2 is really, really solid. Some of Garmin's past fancy watches kind of like this use different display technologies and those frankly sucked outdoors in the light, but this is much better and no issues at all there. Once you finish your workout, you're gonna get a quick summary screen on the device, uh, not too much there. Instead, you can check out the majority of your data on the Garmin Connect app. Uh, we're gonna have just, well, tons more data. You can see a couple screenshots here on the screen right now, of just some of that data. For the most part, when you're talking like the base data that you see right here, it'd be pretty hard for most people to tell the difference between the data coming from a Lily 2 versus the data coming from a Venue or Vivo Active lineup on Garmin's kind of lineup of watches there. Uh, that core data is all the same. Of course, the higher you go in Garmin's lineup, the more features you get from a sports standpoint, in particular on the watch, but also some things that are unlocked on Garmin Connect as well. However, one feature that is brand new to Lily and on no other Garmin watches at this point in time is Dance Fitness. So if we go back here, I'm going to tap the activities. There we go. I tap that open and we'll go and find Dance Fitness in here somewhere. There we go. Dance Fitness. This is the new sports profile unique to the Lily 2. And then if we choose the options at the top there, uh, you can choose to mark songs if you want to. You can choose the dance type pop and jazz, line dancing, Latin, hip hop, and so on. There are many different dance uh, types here. Scrolling back down to the bottom and choose the okay. You can change your data screens and then you can tap to start. And then from there, you can actually tap this arrow here to mark those particular songs. Now, there are many things I am very good at when it comes to this tech review channel. Dancing is 100% not one of those things. And thus, I will not be fully testing this particular feature mostly for your benefit. You don't want to see me dance and I don't want to see me dance. So we're just going to trust that there's something cool here. Uh, and that's just not, I'm, I'm sorry, kind of, not really. I'm not sorry at all. Instead, I'm going to give you something way more exciting, accuracy. Accuracy starting off on the GPS side of things, which might sound sort of strange given this watch doesn't have GPS in it. But nonetheless, I always want to look at how these watches handle the GPS data from the smartwatch to ensure there's no complete wonk. Because I've seen a lot of completely wonky connected GPS things over the years from different companies. Here's a run I did last night, just a relatively straightforward run, a bit past some really big buildings as well. My phone that I was using, an iPhone 13 Pro, was in my shorts pocket, my running shorts pocket, uh, so it had obviously some blocked GPS. You can see at a high level, things look pretty darn good. But if you zoom in, you do see when I went past some of those buildings, a bit of wobble here and there. Not a big deal, but of course, that's sort of the trade-off that you make when you don't have GPS in it. On the whole, I had no issues with the connected GPS. It never dropped out or anything like that, even just like for commuting rides and stuff. So all is good there. Instead, let's dive into the heart rate side with this first graph right here of a run my wife did on the treadmill. Uh, and this is compared to a Polar Verity Sense as well as a Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro on her other wrist. And you can see these were all basically the same. Like there was no real issues there. It worked just perfectly. So let's step it up to another indoor workout. This one is a Peloton workout I did indoors. Uh, and this had some pretty high intensity intervals in it. And on the whole, very, very good. There were two brief moments though where the Lily 2 like went off the rails for a couple seconds. Uh, I don't really know why. There's nothing that seemed to happen at that point in time. I didn't really go anywhere, I don't think. But either way, it had some brief moments there. But beyond those moments, it was really, really solid. So pretty happy with that. Now, next up, we got my run from last night. Uh, and you can see here that it actually did really well. Uh, now, you see that other line there? That is the $1,400 Garmin Tactics 7 uh, watch right there that struggled quite a bit. And the reason why that struggled is actually super interesting. It's got a way better optical heart rate sensor on it. And with the right strap, it is far superior in accuracy to little old Lily here. However, it uses this different strap design. I know this is a tangent, but I figured I mentioned it. This different strap design is very, very stiff, and thus you can only get it to kind of certain points on your wrist. And so it's a bit loose on my wrist compared to a normal strap. And thus it actually moves around a little bit, which causes heart rate inaccuracy. Still, the point of that tangent was the Lily 2 did great, so kudos there for that. Now, moving down again to a run that my wife did today. Uh, she started off this run basically relatively steady state. Uh, and then after a little while, she had to stop because the HRM fit chest strap that she had on was having some issues. But the Lily 2 nailed it. It was actually identical to uh, the Polar Verity Sense armband she had on, as well as her Garmin Phoenix 7S Pro watch. Uh, now you see later in that run, there's those little short burst intervals she did. Uh, in that case, it struggled a little bit on two of them. Uh, one of them it entirely missed and one of them it went like half season on. Uh, but the other ones it did basically fine on. So 
you know, overall, this isn't perfect when it comes to optical heart rate sensing, but it's actually pretty good for what it is, in particular how small it is. Uh, because it's so small, there's a chance, a greater chance, of light leakage coming in from the outside. It was a sunny day today, uh, so that can introduce artifacts from an accuracy standpoint of the optical heart rate sensor. So, with that all said, where do we stand overall? Well, number one, I really like the new metal case, but in particular, I like the standardized uh, straps there. Uh, certainly, this isn't probably the watch for me, but I appreciate that going to that 14 millimeter standardized straps as opposed to having some proprietary that's a pain in the butt to get replacements for. Additionally, virtually all of my criticisms on the Gen 1 watch have been resolved. Uh, the gesture wake up time is far better now. It's basically perfect as far as I'm concerned. It's really good. Uh, number two, it doesn't have the false positives while I'm running where it pauses the watch. That's really good. And then three, again, the ban as I mentioned is solved. Of course, there is that price increase in the past. It's now 50 bucks more than the Lily One was, uh, but at the same time, it's got nicer materials on it and also adds more features to it. Overall, you gotta kinda decide what you want with a watch like this. Uh, certainly, this is not a watch that you really want for a complete like sporting focus. Uh, for that, you look at Garmin's Vivo Active or Venue series, uh, or of course, their Forerunner series or something like that. And those watches are priced at effectively the same price point as this, so do keep that in mind. But if you're looking for a blend or something that's stylish, something that doesn't look and feel like a heavy smartwatch, uh, either in features or just in like looks and feels, then this is a pretty good like middle ground between those two, especially because if you were to compare two people's Garmin Connect accounts between a Vivo Active 5 account and a Lily 2 account side by side for the non-sporting side, it'd be incredibly difficult to tell those two uh, accounts apart. The actual data thrown into Garmin Connect, the smartphone app, is almost identical between these two watches, except one looks more like a fashion piece and one looks more like a generic smartwatch. But ultimately it's up to you, depending on what you want out of a watch and what you want a watch to look like and the features and all the things you already know. With that, thanks for watching. If you did find this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.